Hi everyone, I'm Julia from Little World of Whimsy, and today I'm going to teach you all about how to crochet this really cute tiny whale. The materials that you'll need are pretty straightforward. Um, you'll just need a yarn, a hook, and two safety eyes with um, these washers that come with them. I'm using a medium weight worsted cat or category 4 yarn, all three of those words mean the same thing, um, and I'm using a 3.25 millimeter hook which is also called a D-hook in the American system. But the millimeters are kind of universal, so as long as you can find 3.25, then it's, it's the right size hook. The safety eyes are four millimeter, and that just refers to the diameter of the little plastic eye itself. And you can find these on Amazon, um, probably in your local craft store. I got these on Etsy. And the little blush, we're not gonna be covering today because it's a bit of an advanced technique, but, um, if you want, you can also get pink embroidery floss. All right, let's get started. The first step to make this whale is that we're first going to have to make what's called a magic ring. This is basically a loop that allows us to crochet in spiral rounds, and it's the basis for most amigurumi. I have a video all about how to make a magic ring in depth, but I'll go over it quickly here. First, pull out your yarn and grab a length that's like maybe a foot or two long so that you have enough yarn to play with and lay it across your um, left hand, or your non-dominant hand, um, diagonally. Then wrap the yarn around the back of your hand and cross it over the front so that you create an X. Then wrap it around the back again and hold it in place with your pinky, just like this, so that the back forms two parallel um, lines, kind of like train tracks. So this is going to be the first line and this is the second. Grab your crochet hook and hold it like you're holding a knife with your thumb pointing towards the um, tip of the hook and insert the crochet hook under the first line and over the second. Gently pull on the second line until it crosses the first line, then twist your crochet hook away from you so that it kind of twists into a loop. Now we just have one more step and we're going to move the crochet hook from left to right under the left leg of this V shape on top over here. So I'm just going to move the crochet hook from left to right under that V shape and then I'm going to pull up this um, piece of yarn through the loop. So I'm just going to tug and pull it and then in the process I'm going to twist the tip of the crochet hook slightly downward so that it goes into the bottom of the loop which forms kind of a teardrop shape. So I'm just going to pull it through and here we have our magic loop. So again, I have a much more in-depth video on the top right corner um, if you need more help with that. The next step is we're going to identify the tail, which is the end of the yarn not connected to the ball, and I'm just gonna kind of pull it out of the magic ring so I can figure out which piece of yarn it is and then just pull it out so that it doesn't get in our way for later. I'm gonna pull on the tail and make the magic ring smaller so that it's about the size of a dime or a nickel. And of course, if you if you want to redo your magic ring, you can just pull it out um, and it'll kind of go away. So um, you can always, you always have the option if you want to. So here we are with our magic ring about the size of a dime or a nickel. And we're gonna work six single crochet stitches into the magic ring. So one thing I like to do is that when I hold my yarn, I like to hold the piece or like the magic ring or my work with my thumb and my fourth finger because otherwise it's really hard to like do any maneuvering since we're going to be working into the magic circle itself. So I like to hold the tail and also maybe like the bottom half of the magic ring with my left hand so that if I want to go into the circle, I actually can, instead of just kind of kind of like flailing around, <laughs> which makes it a lot harder. So um, by holding the magic ring and the tail, it makes it a lot easier for me to actually move my crochet hook with my right hand and easier to control with my left hand. The setup might take a little bit to get used to, but it really, really helps, trust me. So to work my first single crochet stitch, I'm going to insert my crochet hook from top to bottom or like front to back through the magic ring, and I'm going to move my crochet hook from left to right under the working end of the yarn. After that, I'm going to slightly twist my hook to the left 
and then pull it through to pull up a loop. And then I'm going to do my last step, which is just moving my hook from left to right under the yarn again, and then pulling through both loops. If you just pull it back like this, you'll run into an issue because um, you'll see that it's really hard to get the yarn through the, lo the loops. But if you look at the loops this way, you can see that they actually form like a small teardrop shape. And if you just twist the crochet hook to the left so that the tip is at the bottom of the teardrop, it'll make it a lot easier for you. Another tip is that if you're really having trouble getting it through the two loops, when you pull up a loop in the beginning, you can loosen it a little bit like this just by letting go of the working of the yarn and pulling up with your hook, which will make your loops a lot bigger. And this will really, really help you if you're a complete beginner. So I'm just gonna finish that step, which is um, moving my hook left to right under the yarn and pulling through the two loops. And this is your first single crochet stitch. So I'm going to do this five more times. I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the magic ring, move my hook left to right, and then twist my hook to the left so that I can grab onto the yarn and then pull it through the ring. And then I'm going to kind of pull my hook to make that loop bigger and loosen with my left hand so the, hooks, the loops are really um, nice and big for me. And then I'll move my hook left to right under the yarn again and then pull it through the two, the two loops together. And as you can see, this entire time I've been holding onto the magic ring with my thumb and my forefinger, fourth finger, so that it's a lot easier for me to just work in and out of the magic ring without kind of like losing my place or just not being able to get it in. So really, when you're um, crocheting, you'll need to hold on to the working end of the yarn with your left hand, hold on to the loop, uh, the magic ring at your work or whatever with your thumb and fourth finger, and hold on to your hook with your right hand. So it's kind of like a triad or like a three points of contact, and this will really help you get going. So I've got two stitches um, now, and I'll just do four more single crochet stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the magic ring, move my hook left to right, pull up a loop, move my hook left to right under the yarn again, and then pull through both loops. So that's three. And now I'll insert my hook one more time, move the hook left to right under the yarn, twist my hook to the left, pull up a loop, move my hook left to right again, twist my hook to the left so it's pointing towards the bottom of the teardrop shape in the um, two loops, pull it through, and that is four stitches. And if you want to make your loop a bit smaller to make it more manageable, you can just pull in the tail a little bit. And at this point, there's not really a risk of it kind of like um, pulling apart because we've got the stitches in it. So you can kind of pull it smaller if you need it to be. All right, so we just got two stitches to go and we're going to insert the hook into the magic ring again and then move the hook left to right under the work hand of the yarn, twist the hook to the left slightly, pull up a loop, and then we're going to move the hook left to right under the yarn again, and then pull through both loops. So that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five stitches. So the way you count the stitches is you look at the top of the stitch, and the top is going to be, it might look sideways right now, but it's um, the top which looks like a little braid. Um, this is a side. And the top is also where like the loop is coming out from. So where your hook is, the loop kind of dovetails into the stitches. So to count the stitches, you'll see that there are these little V shapes. So this is the right leg of the V and this is the left leg. And these are the little loops that all like link into each other. So one V is one stitch. And this does not count the loop on your hook. This is not a stitch. So this is the first stitch. This is the second stitch. This is the third stitch, the fourth, and the fifth stitch. And this is a slip knot. The first stitch closest to the slip knot is always the hardest to count. And so if you're really struggling, that's like okay, because the most you can be off by is by one stitch if you count one extra or not. So don't worry too much, but it's just important that you're able to identify the stitches over here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five stitches. And I just need to do one more to get six total stitches for our first round. 
So I'm going to do one more stitch by inserting my hook into the magic ring, moving the hook left to right, twisting my hook slightly to the left, and pulling up a loop. Then I'm going to move my hook left to right one more time, twist it slightly to the left, and then pull through. So we now have six stitches in our magic ring. So we're just going to close the ring by pulling on the tail so that it cinches shut. And it'll look a little bit like a mess, but um, the beginning is always the hardest, so don't worry. So if you have a stitch marker, this is a great time to get one. Stitch markers look like this, and they're just like a plastic safety pin that you can sometimes open or close. And they just help you keep track of which is the last stitch um, in your round. And this is really important for amigurumi because we usually crochet in spiral rounds. So as you can imagine, you can't really tell where the spiral begins or ends, and so um, it's really useful to have one of these. So I'll just show you how I use it. So I just finished um, the sixth stitch in, our, in my first round, and I'm just going to stick the stitch marker through um, the last stitch by going under the two legs of the V. And then I'm just going to close it. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a safety pin or um, any other like paper clip, clip kind of thing. But if you really have nothing, I'll show you how to use the tail. So the tail should just extend out from the bottom of your magic ring. Um, and you can insert your crochet hook under the two legs of the V. And you can just pull the tail through like this. And then it'll show you where the last stitch um, is. So this is another alternative to use. Or you can just use like a scrap piece of yarn. Both are totally fine. Um, so I'm just going to use my stitch marker. So now we're going to move on to the second round. And the second round is going to be a bit different because we're actually going to crochet two single crochet stitches into each stitch. So the first round we had six stitches, so that means that in the second round we'll have 12 stitches. And we're doing that just so we can make um, the circle a little bit bigger so that we can form um, the top of the whale. Because right now we are, we are just at the first little round of the first six stitches right here. And then we now need to make 12 so that it'll be a bit bigger. So the first thing we need to do is identify the first stitch in the first round because we're going to be crocheting on top of it. In crochet and in amigurumi, we kind of always crochet on top of other stitches, like building blocks. And so if we add stitches, we always have to add them into like a stitch from the previous round. This will be pretty tricky to find um, where the first stitch is. And so an easy way I like to use is I just like to count back from my hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, cause it, it can be kind of hard to see with like all the messiness going on here. Um, which actually is the first stitch in the round. But counting backwards from your hook um, can make it easier for you because you know you only worked six stitches in the first round, so um, it's got to be this one. So we're going to insert our crochet hook into the first stitch, and we're going to do that by inserting the hook under the two legs of the V. So it might be kind of hard to see, but just look at the two legs of the V and just go right under it. You don't have to worry about what's happening down here. So I'm just going to go right under um, both legs of the V. And it might be kind of hard to see. You can also go one at a time if you want to. There's no problem in that. Now I kind of just use my left hand to squeeze them over because it's usually like a little bit tight in the beginning. So now that we have gotten through, um, so as you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but I've just gone under the two legs of the V, which is um, the first stitch. And I'm just going to work one single crochet stitch first. So I'll move my hook left to right under the yarn, and I'm going to twist it slightly to the left so that it can get through, and I'll pull it under um, the stitch that I just went through. Nice. And then I'm going to pull on my hook a little bit to make that loop a bit bigger, and just let go with my left hand so that the yarn is free to kind of like expand. Now I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn again and twist to the left slightly and pull through. And that is one single crochet stitch. However, because we're working two single crochet stitches into the same stitch, 
we'll have to go back into that same um, stitch to work another single crochet stitch. So to be able to tell which stitch you need to go into, you can kind of see like, so you can see the loop on my hook and the loop on the hook is attached to these two loops below, which is the first um, single crochet stitch that I worked. And you can see that this one on the left is kind of attached to this, um, this loop over here. And that is, so this is the first stitch that I just went into. So if we're going to move on, we just move on to the next V in the, um, the first round. But because I need to do an increase, I'm just going to go back into that first stitch and just work one more stitch. So I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, twist to the left, pull up a loop, and then move my hook left to right under the yarn again, twist to the left, and pull through. So that is now two stitches, and you can see because my stitch marker is in the last stitch of the first round, and now I've crocheted two more stitches, both in the same stitch. So now we're going to move on to the second stitch in um, round one. So if you can see, there's kind of like a big hole over here right now. This is actually all the first stitch and it's the hole exists because we just worked two stitches into it. And so that's why um, it's kind of like expanded a little bit. So we're going to skip this hole over here and go into the next stitch. And so we are going to find the next V shape over here and then go under it with the hook and then we're going to work two more single crochet stitches. So I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, twist slightly to the left, pull up a loop, and then move my hook left to right under the yarn again, twist slightly to the left, and then pull through. So that is one, and then we're going to do one more stitch into this stitch because it's an increase, which means we need to do two stitches into every stitch. So this time we can go into this hole right here because um, we need to do one more and we know that the hole is a bit big because I've already um, put one stitch into it. So I'm going to insert my hook into that same stitch and I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, twist slightly to the left, pull up a loop and I can expand that loop if I need to with my hook and then I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn again and then pull through. Awesome, so now we've got four total stitches. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna to need to repeat that for the rest of the four stitches. So one, two, three, and then four stitches in the first round. So in the first round, we had six stitches. So now in the second round, we'll have 12. So let's do one more increase. So this is the next stitch. And I'm gonna insert my hook under the V, under both legs of the V. I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn and twist slightly to the left and then pull through. And I'm going to move my hook up a little to expand the loop so it's a bit bigger. And I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, pull through. So that's the first stitch. And I'm going to identify the same stitch and I can kind of do that also by pulling on this and seeing where it's pulling and that, I know that's exactly where I need to go back into because I need to put them both in the same place. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that hole and then move my hook left to right under the yarn and turn my hook to the left, pull up a loop and then move my hook left to right under the yarn again and then pull through both loops. So that is um, half of the stitches done in round two and now you can count the stitches so I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's great news because we had, um, we need to make twice as many as there were and um, we're on track. And if you ever find that the hole in the middle, middle is getting bigger, you can always pull on the tail to close it so that it's completely seamless. And as you can see, we'll need the loop to be really, really tightly closed so that it doesn't show um, at the end. So we've got three increases left to go, and then we'll be done with round two. So I'm gonna do one more increase in this next stitch. So this is the next V, and I'm going to insert my hook right under the V, and I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, and then make my 
loops a bit bigger by pulling on my hook. I'm going to yarn over again and pull through. And then I'm going to do one more single crochet stitch in that same stitch. So that's four increases, and I'm just going to do two more. So now that I've gone to my stitch marker, um, I'm just going to remove that. And so I know that it's the last stitch because I put the stitch marker in it. And I'm just going to do one more increase. And then because I know this is the last stitch in round two, I'm going to reinsert my stitch marker whoops, into the last stitch. So now we should probably count and make sure that we have 12 stitches in round two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Nice! So if you ended up with one extra or a few um, fewer than you're supposed to, you can either redo or you can just keep going and do this as a practice round because honestly a few stitches here and there will not really affect your final product and it's also really important just to be able to get some practice in and make sure that you can work increases and single crochets and so it's totally fine so don't be too hard on yourself. Um, Alright so now that we've done um, the first two rounds Round three is a bit different again, so instead of working increases in every single stitch, we're going to work a single crochet stitch in one stitch, and then we're going to work an increase in the second stitch, and we're going to repeat that all around. So in the second round we'll have 12 stitches, but in round three we'll have 18, um, because um, we're not increasing as quickly. So our piece is growing a bit bigger, and so it makes it easier for us to find the first stitch um, in the round. So the first stitch in the round is going to be this V which is the closest to my hook and also I can tell because if I kind of move my my hook I can see that it's attached to this giant hole here and so I'm going to go to the next um, stitch that's not the one I'm currently in right now. So the pattern says to do one single crochet stitch first. So I'm going to insert my hook under the two legs of the V again I'm going to yarn over, twist my hook to the left, pull through the stitch, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through both stitches. So that's it for the first stitch, and then for the second stitch I'm going to do an increase. So that means I'm going to put two single crochet stitches into this one stitch. So I'm going to um, insert my hook under the two legs of the V, I'm going to move my hook left to right, um, and then I'm going to turn my hook to the left slightly. I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops. So that's the first stitch of the increase and I'm going to do one more and I can see that it's this hole that my yarn is attached to that I just worked my stitch into so I'm going to go back into that hole and I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, twist the hook to the left, pull up a loop, and then yarn over again and pull through. So that is my first increase. So then I'm just going to keep doing that pattern all around, meaning I'm going to do it in one single crochet stitch in this stitch and then two um, single crochet stitches in the next stitch because that's an increase and then I'm going to do one here, two here, one here, two here, one here, two here, one here, and then two in the last stitch. So I'm just going to keep going all around and you can follow along.
So this is my last stitch. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm going to do my last increase for this round. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. That's my first single crochet stitch. And then I'm going to do my second single crochet stitch into the same stitch. And that is the end of round three. So I'm going to tug on the tail again to close the circle a bit. And I'm going to replace my stitch marker. So round four is very similar to this round. Um, so at the end of this round we should have 18 stitches, so we just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Perfect. So in the next round we'll do um, two single crochet stitches into the next two stitches and then we'll do one increase. So we'll do one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, and then one, one, and two in the last stitch. So I'll demonstrate that um, for you now, and then we can keep going. So in the first stitch, which is the next V from my hook, so I can see which is the stitch I'm currently in right now, and then I'm like, okay, it's not this hole here, so it must be the next stitch right over there. I'm going to insert my hook under the two legs of the V, yarn over, twist my hook to the left, pull up a loop, and I can pull my hook to make sure that the loop is bigger so it's easier for me, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So that's just one stitch in that stitch, and then we'll do one more in the next stitch. So I'm going to go to the next stitch by inserting my hook, and then yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over again, and pulling through. And so we've done two stitches in the first two stitches, and then we'll do two in the third stitch. So we're going to do our increase now. So we're going to find the next stitch, and then we're going to insert the hook under the two legs of the V, move the hook left to right under the yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through, and then we're going to do one more stitch into the same stitch. So I can see that it's that hole that gets bigger when I pull it right here. Insert the hook into there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. Alright, so that is the whole sequence um, for your fourth round, so I'm just going to keep doing that all around.
All right, so this is our last stitch. So we're gonna take the stitch marker out and then we're gonna do one more increase into this last stitch. So I'm gonna go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through, and that's the first stitch. And then I'll do one more stitch into the same stitch. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. And then I'm gonna reinsert the stitch marker into that stitch. Nice. So we are doing our last round of increases right now, and this is going to be three single crochet stitches and then one increase. So we're going to do one, 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 two, one, 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 two, and so on. So this is very similar to the last few rounds that we did, and then after that, we'll just be single crocheting all around with no increases for a couple stitches, which is really, really nice. So we'll just do round five right now, which is three single, three single crochet stitches and then an increase. So I'll do the first single crochet stitch. So yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through. That's one. And then two, I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through and then find the the third stitch, which is going to be the next one, um, that's not the big hole I'm in, so the next one over here. And I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. So that's the third single crochet stitch that we've made in a row, and so that means it's time for our increase. So in the next um, stitch that we're going to work into, we're going to do one um, single crochet stitch, and then we're gonna do another one right into the same stitch as before. So now I'm just gonna repeat that sequence. Three single, three single crochet stitches and then an increase all around my circle. Alright, so we're at our last stitch of round five, and this last one is an increase. I just want to call your attention to the way that I'm holding my work. Um, just like in the beginning, I'm holding the piece with my thumb and my fourth finger. And I like holding it with my left hand right under where my hook is and like where I'm working into next. Um, and it, because it really helps me keep everything stable because if I wasn't holding it over here, I was holding it like over here, it would be much harder for me to insert my hook anywhere. Um, it would just be really floppy and really difficult to like really be able to 
move my hook. So that's why I like holding my um, crochet work right under where I'm going into so that way I can really have a lot of leverage and mobility with my hook. So I'm going to take my stitch marker off and see I'm going to move my thumb and forefinger so they're right under that stitch I'm going to be working into. I'm going to reinsert my hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through, and then do one more stitch right in the same place. All right, so we made it past um, all five increase rounds for this whale. And so actually um, on our whale, we're kind of like already over here. So we've made our circle and it's kind of like here. <laughs> so he's got a little hat now. Um, but the next um, three rounds are just going to be just going around and no increases. So in our fifth round, we should have 30 stitches. So we'll just be making 30 stitches around for the next three rounds. And that just like builds up the body um, area so that, um, as you can see, it's no longer like getting bigger. We're just, just going straight down. And so after we do our three rounds of just going all around, we'll start decreasing. Well, we'll make our fins first, but after that, we'll just start decreasing and that will be the whole whale. So congratulations on getting past the increased part. Um, this truly is the hardest part because the beginning is really difficult um, to learn how to increase and work single crochet stitches all while <laughs> getting into that magic ring. But after this, it'll be much easier, I promise. So for the next three rounds, I'm just going to work into every single stitch all around and you can check after you finish each round that you've got 30. And if you don't have 30, you can just add an increase somewhere um, just to make that up, it's totally fine. Um, the good thing about crochet is that um, it's pretty forgiving and like you won't really be able to tell <laughs> if it's a bit off um, here or there. Um, also, you might notice that your work right now looks a little bit hexagonal, like there are these six sides. That's totally normal, that's because we are increasing by six stitches in each round and it won't affect the final shape. Um, it looked that way for me when I made this one, and as you can see, you really <laughs> can't tell that the top looked a bit like a hexagon. Um, there are techniques um, down the road for making it more circular if you just want to make like a round like coaster or something, but for amigurumi, it's totally fine. So let's just go all around and we'll do three rounds of this. Okay, so I've just finished crocheting around um, three rounds for um, the sixth through eighth rounds. And as you can see, I've kind of like built it up into a kind of a bowl shape. So we're kind of like halfway down um, the little whale. And as you can see, um, as we continue building up, there's kind of like an inside and an outside. Like the fabric looks different um, this side versus the inside. And the outside kind of just has like these little horizontal like um, bars or like they look like dashes all around and the other side has these V uh, vertical like V shapes that look like they're stacking on top of each other. So normally for amigurumi we tend to flip the work inside out meaning that um, the V um, pattern fabric is on the outside and with the tail on the inside and this is convenient because we can just easily hide the tail and just stuff it in. Um, without having to weave it in separately. And also because most amigurumi um, creators just tend to like the outside, um, like just like the V pattern more um, on the outside. So as you can see, I've done that here as well. And that's what um, you can see. So you don't have to flip it inside out, but um, just know that like if you're following a pattern and you're looking at process photos or if you're watching someone online and it suddenly like is flipped and also you're going in like the other direction, um, that's why. <laughs> it's just important for everyone to know so that you don't get confused later on. So now um, we finished kind of like the top and also the, we're actually going this way, the top and the middle. And now is the round where we're going to make our fins. So we're not going to make, usually um, amigurumi patterns that look like this, they'll probably make the fins separately and then just sew them on later. 
um, but that's a bit tricky because um, the fins will have to be really really small and it's really hard to make plastic rings that small so we're just going to work them directly onto the body um, and we're going to um, do it that way without sewing so the first thing you need to do is you'll need to get three more stitch markers or different colored pieces of yarn um, and we're going to use them to help identify where we want to put the fins and the tail so i've got these three green stitch markers and i'm just going to pick where i want the fins and the tail to be so I'm just going to pretend I'm looking from the top and I'll say, okay, I want the fins to be like maybe at 10 and 2 and I want the tail to be at the bottom. So I'll just put the stitch markers into the stitches where I want the um, each of the things to be. And again, if you don't have stitch markers, you can just use a different color piece of yarn and just pull it through the stitches to just tell you where you want everything to be. So this will be really helpful because when we're working the next round, we'll just crochet to that stitch with a stitch marker and then we will um, know that's where to work our different limbs. So I'm doing 10 and 2, so it's 10 o'clock. This is maybe 2 o'clock. So where I'm currently at right now is going to be like the, the front or like the face, I guess. So these two are the fins for me and then the small one is going to be the tail. And Again, this is the view from the finished version, so um, we're looking top down. So we're going to put the two fins over here and the tail is going to be directly at the back. And if you want, you can always like count between these two to make sure it's perfectly um, even so that they're the same number of stitches to the left and the right, but I'm kind of just going to leave it that way um, for now. Okay, so let's um, do the round with the fins and the tail, and we're gonna do that by just crocheting to this first stitch marker. And we're just gonna crochet one stitch per, per stitch, so we don't have to do any increases or anything. And all right. So now that we've gone to the stitch marker where we're gonna put our first fin, we're gonna take it out, and then we're gonna crochet one stitch into that stitch but next, we're going to work the fin, and so I'm going to demonstrate this now, and then we'll do it again when we get back to the other side. So I'm going to chain three, and to chain, you're just going to move the hook left to right under the yarn, and then pull through, and that's one chain. So it looks like a stitch, but it doesn't have, like, it's a lot smaller. And I'm going to do two more of those. So I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, pull through, and then do one more. So move the hook left to right under the yarn. And pull through. We've got three chains going off the side of our whale where we want the fins to be. So this loop is just where my hook is and this is the first chain that's next to my hook. This is the second chain, and this is the third chain. I'm just counting the V's just like just like before with the stitches. So I'm actually just going to insert my hook into the second chain from the hook and I'm just going to go between the two V's it doesn't really matter where you go as long as you just get through um, the chain stitch. And I'm going to work one single crochet stitch. And I'm going to do that by just moving the hook left to right under the yarn. And notice again, I'm holding the my work right under where it is, so otherwise it would just be really hard to get it through. But because I'm holding it right here, I can kind of like use my left hand to help maneuver. So I'm going to move my hook left to right under the yarn, pull through the chain, then yarn over and pull through. So that's one stitch in the second chain and then I'm going to find the third chain which is right here. Insert my hook into the chain, yarn over, pull through the chain stitch, yarn over and pull through. So we've got the beginnings of our tiny fin and I'm just going to do one more stitch into the same stitch so, um, so I can secure it. So I'm going to go right into the same stitch from where we first um, started. And so I can see that because this whole thing is connected to the body of the whale by this stitch. And you can see that because when I pull it, the hole gets a little bit wider. So I'm gonna go right into that hole. And I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. And that is our fin. So now I'm just gonna keep going around and working one stitch in per, um, stitch until I get to the tail. 
And the tail, we're going to use a very similar technique as the fin. But we're just going to make it a little bit like forked so that it becomes a tiny little cute tail. So this is what it'll look like when I'm done, but it's just like a tiny little piece going off the side, which I think is super cute. And I feel like it's a pretty easy no-so technique to make the whole thing easier for us. All right, so now we're at the stitch marker. That's where we want the tail to be. And so I'm just going to take the stitch marker out. And then I'm going to single crochet and do that stitch just like before. And I'm gonna chain three off the side again. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, that's one. Yarn over, pull through, that's two. And yarn over, pull through, and that's three. And again, I'm going to see that I have one, two, three chains. I'm going to insert my hook into the second, skip the first one, insert my hook into the second chain from the hook, right through the middle of the two V's, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. And I'm going to go into the first chain, which is going to be this one closest to the body. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. And so see we've kind of just made one fin like last time, but it's kind of going to be like half of the tail. So I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch that we were in to begin with, um, the one that this whole fin is attached to. So I'm going to insert my hook into that hole, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. So that's half of our tail, which is just like one fin. And then we're just going to repeat that so that we can make two like forks kind of. So I'm going to yarn, uh, I'm going to chain three times, one, two, and three. I'm going to skip the first chain closest to the hook, insert my hook into the second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, and I'm going to insert my hook into the first chain, which is closest to the body, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. And then to anchor this whole thing, we're just going to go back and do that first stitch, so you can see it's this one with the hole right here and then work one single crochet stitch again. So now we've got our two little um, forks of the tail um, securely anchored to the side of the body. So now we're just going to keep going and go into the next stitch and crochet until we get to the last fin and then we'll just make one more fin over there. Alright, so we've already made one fin and then one tail, and so we'll just make one more fin over here. We're going to work into that same stitch, and then we're going to chain three. So one, two, three, and then we'll skip the first chain and work one single crochet stitch into the second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, and then we'll go into that first chain right here. And then we'll yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. And then we'll just go back into that first stitch and anchor it by working one single crochet stitch again. And there we have it. That's our two fins and the tail. So let's just work back to the um, original stitch marker, which tells us that that's the end of the round. And in the next round, we'll just do one more round of going all around without any increases or anything, and I'll just show you how to skip these um, little bits so that we can kind of get back to normal. So for this round, we'll just single crochet to the fin, the tail, and the other fin, and then we'll just kind of skip um, this bit. We'll just single crochet into this stitch, and then skip it, and then single crochet into the next stitch. 
And this is kind of like a technique that let us help us um, able to get back to um, where we were in the beginning um, without having made the fins in the tail. And as you can see, um, it creates kind of like a really seamless um, kind of next round. And they do leave these like really, really tiny like little holes, but you can't really tell. And I think it's like a great solution um, all around. So let's get started. So we'll just single crochet to the fin and so the fin as you can see start is kind of like anchored to this stitch so I'm just going to do the one next to it and then now that I'm kind of like right next to the fin and it's kind of like hard to like work the next stitch I'm going to bend it backwards and then find the next available stitch, which is going to be this one right here. It's right over here. And I'm just going to keep the fin bent back and insert my hook into that stitch. So this way I'm kind of just like skipping over the fin right here. And then I'm just going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. And see how we've just like closed off um, that fin right there? So it's just going to stay out here, but we have just worked on top of it so that we have kind of an unbroken round of stitches at this point. So we'll just keep going until the tail and we'll do the same thing. So we're almost at the tail and as you can see we're kind of facing the same problem where we can see stitches all the way up to here but we can't kind of get around the tail. So we're just going to work those last um, single crochet stitches. And I think this is gonna be the last one right here. So I'm just gonna go in there, work my stitch, and then like before, I'm going to bend the tail backwards and see where the next stitch is that I can work into. So I'm gonna work into that one right there. So I'm going to kind of keep the tail bent back, move the hook around, and grab that stitch and then work my single crochet stitch. So this one will result in a bit of a bigger hole because this tail's a bit bigger, but that's totally fine. We have successfully worked around it and we can just keep going. And so that is the um, fin and one tail and you just have to do one more fin and then we're home free. Alright, so we've got this stitch and we've got this one, so I'm just going to work this one as the last one. And then I'm going to bend the fin backwards and then try to see what stitch would be the next stitch I can work into. Maybe this one? Because there are stitches like going up the side right here, but like I don't want to be on the fin, so I'm just trying to find the next one that's like on the actual round itself. So I'm gonna go into that one right there. Nice, so we've gotten all um, two fins and the tail. So now the next step in our whale is that we're gonna start um, working decrease rounds. So we've basically finished making the body of the whale at this point, including the fins and the tail, and then um, we're just going to start making the whale smaller so that we can eventually close it off. So if I show you on my prototype, we have kind of just finished most of the most of the body actually. And we've gotten the, the limbs all there. So we're doing really well. The next round is going to be our first decrease round. So to decrease, um, we'll just have we'll just combine two stitches into one, so that we end up with one fewer stitch basically. So increasing is adding a stitch, decreasing is taking one away. So the pattern says to first work three single crochet think work three single crochet stitches and then do a decrease. So I'll do one, two and three, and then I'll do a decrease. 
unfortunate timing, it's on top of the fin, but that's okay. So to do a decrease, you'll insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, but instead of just finishing off like you would normally, you'll just go into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So at this point, you'll have three stitches or three loops on your hook, and the last step is just to yarn over and pull through all three. And if this is tough, you can, as always, move your hook around so that you get more um, kind of like give over here so that you have bigger loops, and then you can yarn over and pull through all three more easily. And it's totally fine to get through um, the three loops one at a time if that is what helps you. Um, nothing wrong with that. So we'll do that one more time. So we'll work three stitches. One, two, and three. And then we'll do our decrease, which is we'll insert a hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. And like I said before, it's okay if you just go through one at a time. So one, two, and three. That's totally okay. So this will just make our amigurumi get a little bit smaller. And so now we just have to keep doing that all around. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, and then decrease. So insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, insert the hook again, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. And then I'm gonna do it again, so um, work one single crochet stitch, work another, work a third one, and then I'll do my decrease. So I'm gonna do insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So you can probably already feel your um, piece getting smaller because of the decreased stitches. Um, so we'll just do a couple more repeats of that. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through for one single crochet stitch two single crochet stitches, three, and then we'll do a decrease, insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So now I'm gonna do one more, so yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through for a single crochet stitch. So one, two, and three. All right, and we have to do our decrease. So we're gonna do insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, insert the next stitch, pull up a loop. So we have three loops and then yarn over and pull through all three. So you've noticed we actually have a few extra stitches at the end over here. And this is because when we were working the um, the fins and the tail, it's easy to kind of like mess up our stitch count because we're working extra stitches and then we're kind of like skipping some. Um, and so if you find that you have extra stitches or maybe even fewer at the end over here, um, that's kind of normal because it's hard to control that exactly. And so I would just recommend counting your stitches at this round and making sure that you have 24. And if you have fewer than 24, you can just add an extra decrease or increase somewhere. So I found that I have um, an extra two stitches over here, so I'm just gonna do a decrease at the end to try to make my stitch count lower. And this is pretty normal. Um, this happens to me whenever I'm making amigurumi and I miscount or something. It's totally fine, just add an extra increase or decrease to make your stitch count back to where it should be. So now we're at the last three rounds, and for the next round, we're gonna do two single crochet stitches and then a decrease. Um, so this will be just one, two, and then we'll do our decrease. So insert a hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert a hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over and pull through. And then we'll just repeat that all around. Okay, so that was the last decrease in um, this round, and our next um, round is just going to be one single crochet stitch and then one decrease all around. So I think now is a good time to put in our safety eye since we're almost um, at the end. So once again, remember that we need to put our safety eyes between rounds 9 and 10. So let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So between these two rounds right here. And I think I like putting them right like kind of inside the fins. So I'll just do that again. And I might actually go around higher because I think I want the eyes to be slightly above the fins. So I'm just gonna go uh, maybe right here and you just like um, find like a hole between the stitches to put them into and you just kind of squeeze it in all the way and then um, do it on the other side. Sometimes the pattern will tell you how many stitches um, should be between. In that case you just count one, two, three, four, five, and so on stitches. Um, or you can just like place them wherever you, feel, wherever you feel like looks good. So make sure that when you pin the safety eye that it goes all the way in so that only the top is visible. And that's pretty cute from the sides there. And then we'll just grab the plastic washers and um, place them in and just kind of squeeze them on from the back so that uh, your safety eyes don't come out. And another one quick note to make is that safety eyes are not child safe because even though once you put the plastic washers on, it's actually very, very, oops, <laughs> very hard to take them out unless you just did what I just did, because um, mine are so small. But um, they're actually really hard to take out, and so once you put the washers on, you basically like can't take them off. But these are still not um, completely child safe because like some kids can pull really hard, and so if you have, if it's going to be played with by small children, then um, I would not recommend at all these safety eyes. You should probably just like embroider like little X's for eyes or glue on um, felt circles or something. Um, those would be more child safe and um, much better for kids. So the next round is just going to be one single crochet stitch and then one decrease. And after that, we will um, stuff our amigurumi. So we'll just do one single crochet stitch right here, and then one decrease.
Okay, so I've just finished that round, and now it's time to stuff our amigurumi. So I'm using just polyester fiberfill. You can find this at most craft stores like Michael's or Joann's. And if you don't have fiberfill, you can always use fabric scraps or yarn scraps, or you can even cut open your old stuffed animals and <laughs> use that. But this is um, one option that I like. So basically, whatever stuffing you use, you should always just um, pull it apart or cut it up into smaller pieces because it makes it a lot easier to stuff amigurumi when it's already in small pieces. Then I'm just going to take it piece by piece um, in small pieces and stuff it from the bottom up and make sure that all the corners are filled so that it takes the shape that I want. The problem is if you stuff a whole chunk at a time then the amigurumi will end up looking more like the chunk of stuffing you put in rather than um, the kind of the shape that you made with the crochet fabric. So that's why it's really important to stuff it one um, bit at a time. If you can see um, stuffing poking through like the, the crochet fabric or just like if you can see it um, at all, then that means that your crochet hook was too um, big which meant that your crochet stitches end up being really big and so um, that's why the stuffing kind of pokes through. And so that's why with Omegurumi we tend to size down our hooks. So that's why I use a 3.25mm hook for worsted weight yarn when usually um, the yarn label calls for a 5mm hook or something like that. And so that's why um, it's really important to size on your hook and also to crochet really tightly. So this is something that people don't really figure out until like after your first Omegurumi. So don't feel bad if that's you, um, but it's just because amigurumi are made to be stuffed animals and so you really don't want to see any of the stuffing showing through, whereas for most regular crochet projects like scarves or shawls, it's okay for there to be holes because it's supposed to be drapey and airy and not just like completely dense like this. Um, so that's why amigurumi is kind of like a little bit of a different technique than crochet, um, but that's just because it's for a different purpose. So I also like stuffing pretty firmly, um, so if I'm just like pushing in, I want the, the amigurumi to kind of like bounce back like this. So as you can see when I push it in, it's not like staying kind of flat, it's kind of coming out. And that's um, because um, I've stuffed it pretty firmly and because it's kind of like got like a tension now. And so I like that because um, it keeps the amigurumi kind of like squishy and it won't get deformed easily, and also um, it means that um, your amigurumi will stay really like stuffed for the next like long while because over time like after like a year or so your amigurumi stuffing will kind of like shrink a little bit which will make it a little like less like plump and firm and so you to counteract that you can kind of like stuff it a little bit extra right now so that it'll just last longer down the road. So here we are and pretty happy with this. It's kind of bouncing back when I squish it like this. And I also am going to stuff it a little bit extra over here because I'm still going to crochet a little bit more and I'm not going to really have an opportunity to stuff it. So I'm going to just do a bit extra right over there. So we only have, oh, we just have one round left and that round is going to be a decrease into every single stitch. And um, that's going to be it. And I'll show you how to finish off. So I'm going to put this fiber fill away and then we can make our last our last round. So here we go. So I'm just going to do a decrease into every single stitch. So it's one decrease and it might be a bit harder now because crocheting with the amigurumi already almost done is a bit unwieldy and also the stitches are a lot more like stretched out now and we're really just trying to make the final closure right here. Okay, so we're at our final stitch. And we can take our stitch marker out and we're not going to use it again because we are done. Um, congratulations for making it all the way. This is a tough first project but it's actually the same one that I started with so it is a really good foundation for all future amigurumi.
So I'm going to cut a tail of maybe like six inches with my scissors. And now I'm going to finish off. And so finishing off just means um, pulling the yarn through um, like this, just pulling it all the way out um, so that the um, stitches cannot be undone anymore. Because prior to this step, if you pull on the yarn um, with a loop still intact, then you can just undo the stitches, and which is really easy and a nice way to correct your mistakes. But um, after we pull um, the yarn through, then we won't be able to do that anymore. So I'm just going to pull it all the way out. And as you can see now, when I tug on it, it won't come out. So that means that we are done. We finished off. And I'll just show you how to finish off in the round so that we can tie this tail and close this little um, opening over here. So grab a tapestry needle or a darning needle. These are just um, needles that are blunt and also have larger eyes um, to accommodate yarn. And thread the tail through it. And I like using this method where I kind of bend the yarn over the narrow side of the, the needle and pull it tight. And then I'll twist the needle so that I can push it through the eye. And it usually helps me um, thread my needle a lot faster. There are also um, yarn threaders if you're really struggling. So now I'm going to see how um, on the last round there are six stitches and each of them has like a little kind of post under it. So now I'm going to thread my yarn needle under the first post and pull the yarn through. And I'm going to thread it over the next post and then under the third one, like this. And then over the next one and then under the next one. And that'll get us all the way around the last six stitches. This works for every amigurumi piece. If you have more than six stitches, you can just keep going until you finish it. And I'm just going to pull on the tail so that the opening completely closes like that. Just like pulling on a drawstring bag. And I'm going to insert my needle through the center of that opening and push it out anywhere else on the amigurumi piece. Like this, I'm gonna pull it. And this will eliminate any like pucker that's at the end and also like make sure the bottom is nice and smooth. So you can pull it more or you can pull it less if you like. And um, you can just cut the, the yarn flush with the crochet fabric like this, and you will be done. And if you can see any of the yarn like poking through where you cut it, I think it's over here, you can just push it back into the um, amigurumi piece with the back of your tapestry needle or um, your hook. And you are done! So this is your whale, and this is my first whale. Um, they look pretty similar, so I am really happy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I know it was really long, but it was as complete as I could make it, because I know this is a beginner's tutorial, so I want to really teach everything that I know. And I hope you liked the techniques we used for the fins and the tail. I feel like they're pretty easy and straightforward. And so thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe or comment and ask me for another project that you'd like to see. So thank you so much, and have a great day.